2016 marks the reboot of two classic franchises, Doom and Ghostbusters. The 2016 rendition of Doom took me by surprise. It's an incredibly enjoyable, classic shooter full of fast-paced action, retro level design and awesome weaponry. Despite having a mediocre and unbalanced multiplayer and a severely limited mapping tool, Doom 2016 is probably a candidate for one of my favourite games of the year. On the other hand, the 2016 reboot of Ghostbusters that has me sceptical. It could turn out very well, but right now I'm a little bit wary. The trailers haven't really convinced me. So for now, I have my doubts. Also, people are allowed to be wary of a movie. It shouldn't be a point of contention, so let's please move past this. But regardless of whether or not these two reboots tickle your fancy, the originals are still awesome after all these years. So awesome, in fact, that someone decided to combine the two in a mod for Doom, simply titled Ghostbusters Doom. You gotta admire the simplicity of it, haven't you? Ghostbusters Doom initially started development in 1998 and was last updated in 2002. Unfortunately, it wasn't ever finished, but what's there is available to play. It was created by a user called Scuba Steve and features new weapons, enemies, levels, sprites and everything. A full overhaul of Doom 2. The game is actually based on both of the original Ghostbusters movies and you play as Egon Spengler throughout the game. And with that out of the way, I'm excited to bust some ghosts. The main menu for this mod is kind of cool, and you can see that they modded the font to have the Ghostbusters logo replacing the O. It's a little tacky, but it's also kind of adorable. Straight away, the game drops you off at the New York Public Library, one of the most iconic Ghostbusters scenes, and here's something you don't see often in Doom Wads, friendly NPCs. Granted, they don't actually do anything, but they're definitely NPCs because it seems that they still have the alert noises of the zombies in Doom. So essentially, whenever a pedestrian sees you in this game, they growl at you. Well, the people of New York have never been known for their good manners. And you can actually kill these people and angry ghosts pop out of them. There aren't any repercussions for your actions unless you count the angry ghosts attacking you. But still, it's quite bizarre that murder is actually a thing in this Ghostbusters mod. I have to say that I really love the HUD in this mod, mainly because you can see Egon down there. Sometimes mods do away with the Doom Guy face. You can't get rid of the Doom Guy face. It's just wrong. The best part though is when you're firing a weapon down and he pulls this face. So it's kind of like a... <laughs> Gotta be honest though, this library is a labyrinth. Who would design a library like this? Although there are a lot of set pieces that represent the movie, like the stacked books. You're right, no human being would stack books like this. And like the movie, you come across the jump scare ghost. Get her! <laughs> And then you're forced out and the level ends with a groovy screen. I bet even Ray Parker Jr. himself could get down with this remix. The fire station is included as a level here as well, and you can slide down the pole, which, as a Ghostbusters fan, is pretty awesome. Of course, there's also a great MIDI of the Ghostbusters theme here. You can't beat a good MIDI. On the other hand, I'm not sure if this mod understands how mirrors work. I mean, can you see what's wrong here? Let me illustrate. Here's how it should be. And here's how it is in game. To be fair, if this was corrected, this is a pretty clever way of doing a mirror. As in, if you look at the map, you can see that the mirror area is actually another room, and the mirror itself is actually a window. It's always interesting to see how people get around the limitations of Doom with stuff like this. So then we press a button next to a huge computer. Like, damn, that is a meaty build right there. I suppose the main question for me is, can it run Crisis? This button causes the front doors to open up, and we enter the Ecto-1. And you can actually drive around the streets of New York. You have to admit, this mod for its time was pretty ambitious. The car itself is actually coded as a weapon, I believe based off the chainsaw. What this causes is a car that's not really a car, it's a bit of an illusion. You can still see the view bob while moving, and the car doesn't handle any differently than when you do on foot. The whole car in Doom thing is an interesting idea, but it feels so bizarre when it's the same as controlling a person. You can also go full GTA on pedestrians and it's kinda hilarious because it just looks dumb. <laughs> Watch out everybody, Egon's drunk and causing havoc in the city. In addition, this area introduces the first enemies, and I think many of them are just original creations. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of them. They seem a little... out of place. Not to mention, this area is so annoying to navigate. I mean, I assumed it was supposed to be this hotel like in the movie, but <laughs> I couldn't find parking. Like, literally, I, I couldn't find a parking space. And they say video games are an escape from reality. 
The next level is supposed to be the hotel where the guys find and capture the iconic Slimer, but unfortunately this level appears to be unfinished, so I guess we move on. The next level seems really disconnected from the rest. I'm not sure if it was a planned secret level, but I'm pretty sure this mansion was never part of the movie at all. And this rain is definitely a little bit too much, like I actually can't see. This is fine. I ended up not finishing this specific level though because I wasn't given enough ammo and there were loads of bootleg caker demons and zombies. I mean I don't think zombies were actually a thing in the Ghostbusters movies, at least not as far as I know. And these guys never seem to shut up about fresh meat. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. You'd think they'd be queuing up for the butchers or something. Fresh meat. I did try to cheat and give myself some weapons, but I accidentally gave myself the Ecto-1 and there's no escape from that apparently. You wanna cheat buddy, well screw you. We're locking you in the car, it's the middle of summer, we're not even gonna wind the windows down. That's what you get. That's what you get for cheating. And so we move onwards, and we cut straight to a more iconic scene of the movie, where Walter Peck forces the Ghostbusters to shut off the containment grid, causing a bit of a ghost meltdown. And here's Walter Peck in game. Yep, you can knock him out. Heading upstairs, Slimer finally makes an appearance, and again, I barely have any equipment to use on these things. Then one of those demon dog things turns up as well, and, and they look great. So finally we're getting to the end of Ghostbusters 1 and we have the apartment building. So you fight your way up and you meet this guy. Oh, beautiful. You know what I wanted to see today? It was that. It was that right there. I definitely wanted to see that. That guy right there. Highlight on my day. If you've got the stones to make it through that and some of the demon dogs, you can get to the rooftop. Now here, here we have a fairly complete section of the game, and one of the coolest honestly. After interacting with Goza, you of course get to fight the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, and I really love how it's done here. Essentially what you have is a sprite on top of a polygonal body, but it pulls off this illusion in the Doom Engine that ends up looking quite awesome. This version of Stay Puffed spits hot fire at you until you zap him down to size. So that's of course what's one covered in a very abridged game form. It's kind of cute really, even if it can get a bit weird at times. From what we can see of this mod, it captures the original movie really well, even some of the humour. There's also a few Ghostbusters 2 levels, but I think by this point you get the gist. Of course there are a few things that don't quite work. I mean some of the enemies seem a little out of place in the universe, and I'm not entirely sure if the weapons really translate well. The proton pack feels great at least, if not a bit loud. To me, the other weapons feel kind of filler, and overall it feels like the ghosts are being murdered as opposed to being caught. But still, it's a fun little total conversion for Doom that shouldn't be taken too seriously. And it stands as a reminder that fans can capture the spirit of something else they love by utilising the modding capabilities of the game. I think it's sad that this kind of modding isn't as supported or encouraged as it used to be. I mean, you can't make Ghostbusters with Snap Map, nor could you make a series of levels based on regular Doom. I mean, look at Deus Vault, look at Back to Saturn, and X, look at the golden souls. Modding tools are a foot in the door for many people to exercise their creativity in game design and make something interesting. I can't necessarily recommend Ghostbusters Doom in its unfinished state, but it might be worth a little look if you're curious. Myself, I just love exploring strange little oddities like this. Maybe it's a weird thing to do with my time, but hey, I get to talk about these things sometimes. Overall, my emotions can be summed up with that one face. It's just beautiful. So